Will Howard backs up into the shotgun. Empty backfield. Howard looking. Howard scrambles. Howard lets it go. Incomplete. And Texas survives. 33 to 30. The final in overtime. You know, week by week, I come to realize that the top 10 is actually pretty good. And what I mean by pretty good is they're very consistent. Like, these guys are always in the top 10. We're gonna have, like, the same rankings in the top 10, especially the top 5. That has stayed the same for weeks now, and these teams are just very consistent, and I could do nothing but applaud them. But without further ado, let's get into my rankings. Okay, guys, so for week 10, as you can see, it's kind of looking the same in the top five. Like I said, there was a move around. I did move Georgia above Ohio State after that game. We're going to talk about all of them and give you guys a reasoning behind it all. Starting off with Michigan, they play Purdue at home. They won that game 41-13. to This is the first game Michigan's played without their analyst or recruiting analyst. I think it was Connor Stallions in the ear of their offensive coordinator. Everyone was memeing Michigan about that all day long, especially Ohio State fans. But the moral of the story, Michigan, they played a really good game. They've shown consistency and that in general, like no matter what an Ohio State fan says, this is a really good team. They're deep on defense and on offense. And I still think they are the number one team in the nation at this point. And then right below them, we have Georgia. They beat Missouri at home at 30 to 21. And this was just a really good game. A lot of mistakes on the end of Missouri. And you're definitely not going to go into Athens making any mistakes and beat this Georgia team. But a lot of the people I was listening to on ESPN and some videos, even on Twitter, saying that this was a dominant win for Georgia. This was not dominant. They did not dominate this game at all. It was really close the entire time. And honestly, we're a couple interceptions away from the quarterback Cook. From them actually being able to knock off Georgia. So them saying that this was a dominant game by them, it wasn't. They played a good game though. Both teams pretty good. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Missouri later on when we get to them. But right after them, I have Ohio State. I moved them down one because of their performance at Rutgers. They actually got outgained in this game. Um, Rutgers had more first downs than they did. And they controlled the time of possession. Now the reason they controlled the time of possession is because they have more possessions in general because the quarterback, Wimzak, he threw a pick six to the Hancock or the secondary of Ohio State. That was in the third quarter, and Ohio State didn't get their first actual offensive possession until like six minutes into the third quarter. And when Ohio State did get the ball, they were making some really big runs, which is why there weren't as many first downs for them. So that's kind of like how it summed up the game. I do want to give Rutgers credit. They came in with a good game plan against Ohio State. Wimsat was able to throw the ball a little bit in the second half, get them going. They were winning 9-7 to at halftime before they let the Buckeyes just completely take over in the second half. And before any Ohio State fan mentions that the whole secondary was out, they were. They were playing three true freshmen. They had two safeties out and a corner, I believe. But firmly, I believe that it's next man up, and they played a good game overall. But moving on after them, I have Florida State. Florida State survived against Pittsburgh. They won that game 24-7. Very ugly game against a not good Pittsburgh team. Again, it was only 10 to 7 at halftime, and I don't know what's wrong with Florida State. They are way more talented than all these teams, but it seems like they play down to a lot of them, and I really do fear that. If they do lose a game, I do not think they'll get into the college football playoff just because of that reason. Jordan Travis is an amazing quarterback. Coleman is an amazing receiver. They have a really good team, but it seems like they underperform when they shouldn't be underperforming. So we'll just have to see what goes on there. I know they're probably going to end up playing Louisville in the ACC championship game and I honestly don't know who will win that game I think Louisville only plays good at home when they play away they're just a completely different team so we're gonna have to see then moving on to the fifth spot we have Washington they win the USC they won that game 52 to 42 high scoring no defense we knew that coming into this game I forgot what the over under was but I'm pretty sure they surpassed it Caleb Williams actually outplayed Penix in this game the real problem was the running game Washington had over 300 yards rushing and this is not a rushing team by any stretch of the means so SC definitely sold out to the pass which they weren't really able to stop but they allow Washington to run that much down their throats and Dylan Johnson he had 256 yards in this game you cannot let that happen and win the game they also won the time of possession they have 572 yards USC at 515 and this is going to be the first time USC is going to be unranked since Lincoln Riley became the head coach then after them, still sitting at the 6th spot, I have the Oregon Ducks, the team that I think is the best in the Pac-12. I feel like they're going to win the Pac-12 championship game. They are going to play Washington, and they're going to win that rematch. Bone Knicks, 
probably going to win the Heisman after he wins that game because he is just putting up numbers and numbers every single game. He is willing his team to win. They play California. They beat that team 63 to 19. Oregon is blowing me away this year with how good and consistent they've been, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And the defense is coming along every single week. I am very impressed with the Ducks. I'm impressed with the receiver, Troy Franklin this year, and even Tess Johnson this game. He had 180 yards. So for everyone wondering, Oregon is coming, and you guys better be able to get ready to play a very consistent team on the offense and defensive side of the ball, especially when the college football playoff comes. Then moving on after them at the seventh spot, we have the Texas Longhorns. They survived a game against Kansas State. They won 33 to 30. And I understand when teams wanna go for the win, especially when they're on the road and they're the underdog. But Kansas State, why didn't you just kick the field goal and go to a second overtime and try to stop them again and get another chance to win the game? I feel like that would have been the better decision, especially when you're in Austin. You gotta live to play another down, but they played really good. They came back. They were losing by a couple touchdowns in this game and the game all the way back in the fourth quarter. Absolutely amazing game. Texas, they really need Quinn Ewers back because I feel like Malik Murphy, he's not ready to get through this home stretch with Texas. I think Kansas State is the best team that they're gonna play, but that doesn't matter a lot of the time. He could just have a terrible game against anybody and they can drop that game and then they're out of the playoff in general, just like Oklahoma. Then at number eight, I have the Alabama Crimson Tide. And the reason I have Texas above Alabama is because of the head to head. I know a lot of people are gonna say like, oh, Texas struggled with Kansas State and then Alabama beat LSU handily, which is a better team. But hear me out, okay? I'm always gonna honor head to head wins if the losses also line up. So like if you guys watched my last video, I had Texas ranked above Oklahoma after they lost to Kansas because Texas, their only loss was Oklahoma and they beat Alabama. Now Oklahoma, their only really good win was against Texas and their loss came to Kansas, which was a team that was unranked, so on and so forth. So I put those two things together and you have to weigh them like that. And Texas lost on the last play of the game. It wasn't like Oklahoma dominated. So for that reason, I had Texas above them. That is the only time well, I won't honor the head-to-head -head as much. But anyway, Alabama, they beat LSU 42-20. Jalen Daniels went down this game. Someone actually put a graphic up because Dallas Turner, he's been injuring quarterbacks for quite a while. Someone put up a video of him knocking four quarterbacks out of a game off of what seemed to be clean slash dirty hits, depending on who you ask. Very fishy, very fishy. But anyway, I think this Alabama team has found some footing in the run game, especially Jalen Milrow. If he runs the ball, he's unstoppable. I think he ran for four touchdowns in this game alone, which is something he has to do more. I know LSU's secondary is completely depleted. Their secondary wasn't good to begin with, and you can pass all over them, run all over them. It's not a good defense. So is it shocking? Not really. Would this game have been closer if Jane Daniels played the entire game? Probably, but it just doesn't happen like that. Alabama came away with the win, very impressive. And then right after them, we have Penn State at the ninth spot. They played Maryland, they won that game 51 to 15. I haven't seen Maryland get beat that bad in a game this season. And honestly, I'm impressed. Now, Penn State, the problem with Penn State is I don't think their secondary is as good because Talia Tangalaya and these other quarterbacks are able to throw on them. But rushing is a whole different game which is weird because I think Maryland only had like four rushing yards in this game as a total. They're not a running team, but just holding them to that is very impressive for them in general. Then next, rounding out my top 10 is Ole Miss. They beat Texas A&M 38 to 35, overrated Ole Miss. I know I talk about it in every single video. I think this team's overrated. Their defense is mediocre at best, and then they have an on and off offense. It's not like a high powered offense like USC, Oregon, or Washington but with the same defense as LSU, basically. And each week they keep scooting by and scooting by, and now they're gonna roll into Athens next week and get absolutely crushed. I think Ole Miss is gonna lose by two plus touchdowns and they're gonna get exposed. Lane Kiffin is finally gonna get exposed. Mark my words, because look, Texas A&M is not a good team. They're very talented. They're missing their starting quarterback. Max Johnson isn't a bad quarterback, but he makes so many mistakes and he is just brittle. Every time he gets hit, he looks hurt. 
and they barely beat that team, which is just a red flag in general, and Ole Miss was at home. And that's all I really have to say about them. And then at the 11th spot, we have Louisville, and I told you guys we're going to talk about Louisville a little bit. Now, Louisville, when they play at home, they just seem to be unstoppable. They beat Notre Dame, they've beaten other good teams at home, but when they're away, they don't win. They lost a pit away by... A I think 15 points, which is so terrible. You cannot do that, especially if you're trying to win the ACC and get into the playoff, which even if they beat Florida State, I don't think that they will get into the playoff unless they win by like 50 or 60 points, kind of like how Ohio State beat Wisconsin in 2014. They beat them 59 to 0, and that's what pushed them into the playoff. But even with that said, I will give them credit. They played Virginia Tech, which is tied with them in the ACC, and they won that game 34-3. to Now, again, that game was at home, and I want to show you guys, like, the schedule and what they do when they're away. When they're away, they lost to Pitt, 38-21. to They beat NC State, 13-10. to NC State is not a good team. At Indiana, 21-14. to At Georgia Tech, 39-34. to All close games. But when they're at home... They're beating Boston College by 30 points. They're beating Murray State by 56. They're beating Notre Dame by double digits. Beating Duke by double digits. Virginia Tech double digits. Like, it's just the common theme. They play really good at home, but once you play away, all bets are off. So when it's on a neutral field against Florida State, when it comes down to that, I don't think they're going to be able to win that game. I'm sorry, Louisville. You are pretty good this year. Jack Plummer, I like you. Brahm is a good coach. Good luck to them for the rest of the year. But moving on from them, we have Oregon State. Oregon State played Colorado. They won that game 26 to 19. Now, I have a couple things to say about this game. In the first half, apparently, Colorado only had like 50 yards of offense or less. And that is utterly disgusting for how good Shadur Sanders is, their quarterback, and the couple weapons that they do have in the receiver core for that team, like Travis Hunter and a couple others. Now, Shadur, he was 24 for 39. He threw for 245 and two touchdowns, but that was all in the second half. The first half was just utterly disgusting by their standards as a more offensive team. And this was not a high scoring game. Oregon State has a good defense. Their offense is a little lacking. But it's the other way around for Colorado. They have a terrible defense, which I'm shocked that Oregon State wasn't able to score at least 40 on them. And, you know, it just kind of surprised me. DJ Uyunglele, he was 12 for 24. He had 220 yards and a touchdown, which, again, isn't really that impressive, especially against one of the worst defenses in college football. Then moving on at the 13th spot, I have Oklahoma State. They beat Oklahoma in Bedlam 27 to 24. This was an amazing game. I had a feeling Oklahoma State was going to win. I picked them to win this game just because of the momentum they had and the kind of downward spiral that Oklahoma has had the last few weeks. This felt like upset all over. And Oklahoma going to the SEC, Oklahoma State being left out. Apparently, the Bedlam game is ending, and this feels like way more personal for Oklahoma State. That's why I chose them to win. They did, they did end up winning. And they won on the back of three guys, Alan Bowman, the quarterback, their top running back, which is the best running back in the country, apparently. He had 137 yards, Ali Gordon, and then the receiver, Rashad Owens, with 136 yards. This game really was evenly matched. It was such an evenly matched game. I love watching it all the way down to the wire. And I know a lot of people are complaining about like the mistakes, the penalties, and what wasn't called. Like on the end zone, there was a ball thrown to Stoops that everyone thought was a PI. I kind of thought it was a PI too, and it wasn't called, and that would have put Oklahoma up. It's just that it didn't end up happening. Oklahoma State won the game. And I've heard other people mention it. Other YouTubers like Uncle Lou and Matt Be Great. The refs this year have been terrible. And I don't know why. It's been every single game. They are not doing that well this year. They need to pick it up. NCAA, do better. And then moving on from them, we have Utah. They played Arizona State. They won that game 55-3. to Now, I'm kind of going to go on a rant a little bit about Washington. Because Washington played this exact Arizona State team at home and only won that game 15 to 7 and they won because of a pick six and then we have utah a team that does not have an offense at all score 55 on them you have to be kidding me arizona state didn't even get to 100 yards they had 83 and utah have 513 they had 352 rushing yards their quarterback bryson barnes had four passing touchdowns this is all the reason why i think oregon is going to beat washington because you cannot have that inconsistency. Playing that bad against a team like this that's getting blown out by Utah, which doesn't have an offense really, is pathetic. It's unacceptable. But credit to Utah. This was a really good game, and they would be higher in my rankings right now if they did not lose 
to Oregon State. But anyway, running on my top 15, I have Missouri. I put Missouri in the same exact spot they were last week. I had them at 15. I think they played a really good game in Athens, and I couldn't really move them back because this is the ranking I think that they deserve. This is a comfortable ranking for them. I think they're better than James Madison, which comes after, and a couple other teams that we're going to talk about. But first, we're going to get on to James Madison. They're 16th. They beat a good Georgia State team, 42-14. to 14. Everyone thought that they were going to drop this game. I watched a few videos saying that Georgia State was going to beat them, but absolutely obliterated this team. Jordan McLeod, 307 yards. He had four touchdowns. Again, they have 570 yards of offense. This team just keeps rolling, and I'm going to keep rewarding them for those wins. And moving on from them, we have Tulane, a struggling Tulane team. They played a lowly East Carolina. East Carolina only has like one win on the season and they only won that game 13 to 10. Now if you look at the stats, Tulane dominated them. They had 20 first downs. They had 10 first downs more than they did. They had 368 yards versus East Carolina's 190. You look at time possession, they had 38 to East Carolina's 21, but they cannot finish drives. They keep making mistakes and this team is getting in its way. And I heard a lot of people talking, well, Michael Pratt, Tulane's quarterback, which is a good quarterback, transferred to a power five school next year. And Pratt, actually denied it to me personally i don't know why he would deny it. i think he can help a team that's really struggling at the quarterback position in the power five and then that would help his draft stock later on because tulane they aren't looking that good right now but moving on from them we have the tennessee volunteers i got them staying at the 18th spot they had a breeze this week they got to play uconn they won that game 15 and 3 there's nothing to talk about it's a travesty that these sec teams schedule these god-awful teams at the end of the season but i digress they get to play georgia in two weeks so i'm gonna let them off the hook for now Tennessee, good luck to you, man. But after that, I have the Kansas Jayhawks sitting at the 19th spot with their win over Iowa State, 28 to 21. Iowa State was actually tied for the lead in the division, which is kind of crazy, but Kansas took that completely away from them. And I just think it's crazy what Kansas is doing with their backup quarterback, Jason Bean, instead of Jalen Daniels, their starting quarterback. They're just winning these games. And it's very impressive. Like going on the road and being Iowa State, Iowa State's been playing really good football recently they're a pretty good pass team but so is kansas and they came to play iowa state was favored in this game and kansas showed up and they won and rounding out the top 20 i have oklahoma and the reason i have kansas above oklahoma is head to head and you're looking at an oklahoma team that has struggled for three weeks in a row they lost their last two so they've moved so far back in my rankings they have two losses same as kansas so i'm gonna honor that head to head and put them above them at the 19th spot and put oklahoma at the 20th spot and i know some people in the comments are gonna talk to me about oh oklahoma they lost to a ranked oklahoma state team at home by one score and i understand but in my rankings i did not have oklahoma state ranked yet this was gonna be the week if they did be oklahoma i was gonna rank them and i did they looked good and i believe they're a really good team but to be unranked oklahoma has lost the two unranked teams back to back to me for my rankings and that is just unacceptable for me that's why they have dropped to the 20th spot and then after them we have a surprise we have arizona sitting at the 21 spot they beat ucla 27 to 10 and i'm gonna tell you guys this arizona team is on fire now i'm gonna go back a few weeks to when they play washington they play washington very well they could have won that game then they played usc the week after should have won that game then they destroy washington state i think washington state was ranked 13th in the country and they beat them 44 to 6 that is insane then they played oregon state another ranked team won 27 to 24 and now another ranked team ucla and they win that game 27 to 10 the last five weeks they have played five ranked teams and they've won three of those games in a row this team deserves it they have three losses but to me they're the best three loss team they are actively playing better than all these higher ranked teams and just shout out to Arizona, they're playing so well. And speaking of three lost teams, I have LSU right behind them. They lost to Alabama. Game would have been closer, but you know, Jane Daniels went down. I still think LSU is a really good team. Their secondary is still really bad, but I'm keeping them at that spot. I'm right behind them. I'm putting the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They lost to a struggling 4 and 4 Clemson team at home. 31 to 23. Now I know Clemson isn't like a traditional 4 and 4 team. They are a top five talented team in the country and they are still really hard to beat at home. But Notre Dame, they could have won this game, but they actively chose to lose this game, especially with Sam Hartman. Clemson kind of was giving the game away to Notre Dame at the end, but Sam Hartman, 
he threw two picks. He threw one pick six in this game and then almost threw another one later on in the game. I don't know what, what's wrong with Sam Hartman. He was a really good ACC quarterback when he played at Wake Forest, but ever since moving to Notre Dame, he has not looked the same. I know Notre Dame does not have good wideouts, but look, Wake Forest really didn't have any either. I just think Notre Dame has to really figure out what their identity is and go down that path. Throwing the ball 30 times when the running game was kind of working with Audric Estime, they should have explored that more. Clemson's quarterback, Klubnik, had a hard nine yards passing, a touchdown and interception. He was not playing well they were able to run the ball and I feel like Notre Dame should have been able to stop them in the run game because Notre Dame is a good run stopping team they're just very up and down this season I'm very disappointed in Notre Dame and then after Notre Dame I have the Liberty Flames finally making their appearance they're 9-0 they just beat Louisiana Tech 56 to 30 this team has low-key been on a tear I know they haven't been playing good competition but being 9-0 is hard in its own right and I feel like you have to reward them so I decided to put them in the top 25 Welcome to Liberty Flames. They have an amazing offense, barely any defense, but they win games and that's all that matters. And then rounding out my top 25, I have Air Force. Air Force was my top group of five team. They ended up losing the Army 23 to three. They had six turnovers in this game, six turnovers. That is the reason that they lost is because they couldn't humble, hold on to the ball. They have four fumbles and two interceptions, I think. That is just unheard of from a team that has played such good defense and been so good at running the ball on offense. It's absolutely unbelievable. I could not drop them out of the top 25 though. I did have them at 13 or 14, so dropping them out I thought was a little egregious. So I put them at the 25th spot and they rounded out for me. Now I want to talk about a couple teams that are sitting on the outside looking in. I have North Carolina sitting on the outside along with Fresno State. I think they're both playing decent football. They both won their last games. Fresno State has been improving. They're my next team up probably in my eyes. So we're just going to have to see what happens in these next couple weeks and maybe they could pop back in. And now I want to talk about matchups for the next week. Now obviously the biggest game next week to me is the Michigan-Penn State game. And Penn State... All I'm gonna say, I hope you guys change your signs. If not, it's gonna be a long day for you guys. And next game to look out for is Tennessee, Missouri. I feel like that's gonna be a high scoring game, but I think Missouri is gonna come back and they're gonna end up winning this game. And then we have Utah, Washington. Utah, again, a really good defense. The offense is a little to be desired at Washington. I feel like Washington's gonna win this game just because they're at home. I would take Utah if Utah was at home, but I feel like the Huskies are gonna keep this thing going. And after that, we have Ole Miss and Georgia. I already explained how I feel about this game. Georgia's going to destroy Ole Miss. Book it right now. And the last game is USC and Oregon. I do not see USC even coming close to Oregon. I don't care how good Caleb Williams plays. Oregon is on a different level. They're at home. They're going to win this game by a few touchdowns. Book it. And that's going to be the video, guys. Leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll catch you guys next week. Peace out.